Happy Christmas and welcome to Worship from Sadak and Dapford's Second on Christmas Day. Let us praise God who loves the world so much that he gave his only son so that we may have life. Glory to God in the highest. Glory to Emmanuel, God here and now, who unites us with all his followers on earth as we offer our Christmas worship. Amen. We light the center candle on the Advent ring and join together to sing, O come, O ye faithful. Let us pray. Here we are, Jesus, on this Christmas day. Here you are, Jesus, always ready for us. You are Emmanuel, God with us always. Today and every day, grant us your spirit of joy and peace. Amen. We light the center candle as a sign that Jesus, the light of the world, has come.
Let us pray. People rejoice. Earth shout for joy. There's something amazing going on. We praise you, God, for you have done a completely new thing, something totally unexpected. Something we can hardly imagine. The creator of the whole universe, born as a tiny baby. Salvation, long promised, has come to earth. Even in the darkest places, God's light has shone. So we worship you. And we join with the song of the angels. Glory to God. Glory in the highest. Amen. Lord God, we praise you for sending light into this world. Yet we confess that we live as though the light had never defeated darkness. We confess that we ignore the Saviour you sent to be among us and to live in us. We've kept the birth of your Son confined to this season of Christmas when we shall pray for his coming every moment in our lives. Open our eyes to see Jesus in our midst. Prepare us for his return. Help us rejoice in the light, so that your grace and mercy can illuminate even the darkest places of our lives. We ask this in his name. Amen. A reading from the book of Isaiah, chapter 9, verses 2, 6 and 7. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. Verse 6. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders. And he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the greatness of his government and peace, there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice, righteousness, from that time and forever. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. Here ends the reading. Thanks be to God. The reading is taken from Luke chapter 2, verses 1 to 7. In those days a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quinquirius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to the city of David called Bethlehem because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there the time came for her to deliver her child and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth, and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. Thanks be to God for his word. Well, today is Christmas Day, and on behalf of the Southwark and Deptford Circuit, I wish you all a very happy Christmas. And, of course, it is a very different Christmas to how we might have planned because of all that we've been through in these last months. Well, behind me you can see two nativity scenes, um, one of which is very special. It is made out of uh, cardboard and tissue paper, and it was made by a member of one of my churches in New Malden, in southwest London, um, some years ago, when she worked with... Uh, older people but her story is an amazing story because she was a refugee from Germany and escaped uh, herself um, from uh, Germany just before the uh, outbreak of war 
she lost a lot of her own family in the concentration camps and she made this particular nativity scene. Um, she was very crafty with her hands and uh, when she was working with older people uh, she was able to create this and it is a great sign of hope and for her in her life was uh, one of the testimonies that she gave of the way in which the story of Christ coming amongst us meant so much and especially through uh, a time of great loss within her own life. That's something perhaps that we can identify with um, through this particular year when things have not been easy for, for many of us. The scene, the nativity scene of Mary, Joseph and the child reminds us that Christ comes into a world in an unseen way, uh, in a way where no red carpet was rolled out for him. Mary and Joseph were completely unknown and God comes to us in that way and that is uh, a way of being able to say to us that, that the priority that God has is, is not for coming to the lives of important people and uh, those who perhaps are, are at the height of fashion or those who, who are famous. Um, Christ comes to a manger, to a stable and to a, a couple who were pushed out, marginalised. And that's the way in which God surprises us and that's the way in which God comes to us. So whether or not it was actually as a baby or whether or not it's in his adult ministry, that theme of Christ coming in unexpected ways to unexpected people and touching their lives with the love from heaven, that's really what the story of Christmas is all about. So I hope that today we are able to focus a little upon that particular story and the hope that it brings to our lives because touched with that love we are able ourselves to know that our lives can be changed, they can be different and indeed we can know God's presence with us.
Today's Bible reading is taken from Luke chapter 8, verse 8 to 20. I read, And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Don't be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in clothes and lying in a major. Suddenly, a great company of heavenly hosts appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and an off peace to those who will win his favor rest. Verse 15. When the angels have left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby, who were lying in the manger. When they had seen the him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. This is the end of the reading. Thanks be to God. We've listened to the story about the birth of Jesus. We've now listened to the story about those who came to see Jesus, first of all. There aren't really any shepherds living in London any longer, but there are people who are called shepherd, Mr. and Mrs. Shepherd. There's probably a Mr. and Mrs. Lamb as well and a Mr. and Mrs. Wiseman. But the shepherds who came to see Jesus were real shepherds. They were people who were working even at night. And what a special night that was when the heavens opened and they heard the angel song, the message that heaven has broken into the realms of earth and we are able to sense God's love in a real way. How do we do that? Well, the shepherds were told to go down to Bethlehem. And they went, and they saw, and they received that message that God has come to the lives of an ordinary family, born in a stable in a backyard behind an inn. And if we needed any confirmation, there we have it, that the first visitors who came to see Jesus, and Mary and Joseph, were again ordinary people, reminding us that God comes to us in ordinary ways, but he makes our lives extraordinary. And that's the message that we have this Christmas, that the touch of God's love in our lives makes each one of us special. Mary and Joseph had to go to be counted 
it was a census that had brought them to Bethlehem. But just because you're counted, it doesn't really mean that you are always going to count in the eyes of others. So whether or not you're like Mary and Joseph, or whether or not you are just one among many shepherds, we remember that God comes to ordinary people's lives, to you and I, and indeed brings to our lives the promise of change, forgiveness, hope, peace, so many gifts at this Christmas time, and not just at Christmas time, but throughout our lives. May I wish you today a very happy Christmas in the way in which you are able to celebrate alone or indeed with others. We hope that through these coming weeks, that as we get back to being in church, if you are able, or indeed as we are able still to worship as we are at the moment through a virtual service, we pray that together we may discern God's love within our lives, its potential for us in bringing to fulfilment all that he wants to do and how he can work through each and every one of us. Every blessing then for this day, through these last days of 2020, and as we move into this next year, may God's blessing be upon us all. Amen. Thank you.
Isolated. When we are grieving. When we are struggling. When we have hit rock bottom. We are never alone. This year has been unbelievable. But we have pulled together. We've worked hard to care for people. To feed people. To help people. To heal people. And we've said loud and clear that people matter more. That injustice is unacceptable. That our community is vital. Our buildings have been closed. But we have been at work. God's love is uncontainable. In times of despair. And in times of hope. You are loved. This Christmas and always, whoever you are, and whatever you have been through this year, God is with you. God, God is with, with me. me. God is with us. 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 Hello, I'm Jude Levermore, Head of Mission. And I'm Phoebe Parkin, the Youth President. We come now to our time of praying for the world, which Jude and I will lead together. So let's take a moment of quiet together now to rest in God's presence. Let us pray. Loving God, in the beginning, Adam and Eve walked in your garden amongst the beauty of your creation. And they were not alone, for you, God, were with them. We give thanks for your wonderful creation and ask that you inspire us and the leaders of the nations to protect and care for all life on earth. Loving God, in your time, you sent your spirit to Mary and she was not alone in her pregnancy, for you, God, were with her. We pray for all those who can't visit friends or family or attend church this Christmas. And we each pray for our own community and home church at this time. Loving God, when Mary and Joseph travelled to Bethlehem for the census, they could find no room at the inn. But they were not alone, for you, God, were with them. We pray for those who live in and around Bethlehem today, for peace and mercy in the Holy Land. Loving God, when others feared the arrival of your son, the Holy Family fled their homeland, and they were not alone, for you, God, were with them. We pray for all who are forced to flee their homes today, that they find welcome and love in a new land. Loving God, when the time was right, you gave your only son to save us and all humanity, and he was not alone on the cross, for you, God, were with him. We pray for all who are suffering, who are ill or in need, and we remember in prayer all those who have died and have risen again into your eternal kingdom. Loving God, you sent your spirit upon the disciples so they could found the church and spread your gospel of good news, and they were not alone in their ministry, for you, God, were with them. We pray for the Church of Christ throughout the world, 
for the ministers who lead and serve your people. Loving God, on this day, we offer you our praise and worship as we celebrate the birth of Christ. And, and we, we are, are not alone, alone for, for you, God, God are, are with us. us. Amen. Amen. The Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you. Nun chole, he jole, ahanye. The peace of our Lord be with you all. The peace of the Lord be with you. The peace of the Lord be with you. May the peace of the Lord be with you. Nyasha dai shewe du Jesu Christu. Ne kuwaza na kwemo ya mchene. Kashvene sutose. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you. May the peace of the Lord be with you. Nyumbo ijole ahane. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you all. Nun chole ijole ahane fe. Afi o afi. Afi ayane bani nao. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you. The peace of the Lord be with you this Christmas. Yeah.
you for all those who have contributed to our worship for Christmas morning, especially our guest choir, the voice of Ciela Rion. In a moment, the voice of Ciela Rion will play out our service. So get ready and dance and celebrate Christmas this morning. But first, a blessing. May the joy of the angels, the eagerness of the shepherds and the perseverance of the wise men, the obedience of Joseph and Mary and the peace of the child Christ be yours this Christmas and the blessing of the Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Be among us and remain with us now and always. Amen. Christmas and I'm